You know, that's how you got a fishy backpack when you still got seagull shit on it from the day before, fishing on the jetty. And the next day you're 200 miles east out in the desert trying to survive off of what you catch for 48 hours. Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Addicted Life. Today, we're out here in the desert testing our might and our manhood and our fishing skills, and we're doing the 48 hour challenge, but addicted style. We're gonna push out on the raft, we're gonna float down the river for two days, and all we got in the cooler here is a little bit of ice, a little bit of white claw, a little bit of water, and some coffee, because we're men. And we're gonna go down and see if we can't have us a good camping trip without taking any food at all. So we're gonna pick berries, I'm gonna try to find some crawdads, hopefully a rattlesnake. Stick around to see if I find one for the menu. If you guys haven't already, go down here, smash that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, comment below with whether or not you'd ever do one of these 48 hour challenges or where you would want to do it if you did. Uh, and if you would ever eat rattlesnake, drop another comment below. You guys stay tuned, we're gonna have an adventure today. day excursion we don't want to get dehydrated and die of famine out there so all we got here is some white claws some water we won't forget the coffee we are men and fishermen at that so we're gonna take some coffee for this too and we're set here we go two days of hunger so I can already tell the hardest part of this challenge is it gonna be catching the food or surviving out there it's gonna be driving past all the fast food restaurants on the way there. Look at old Wendy, she's just staring at me, looking all hot. Whatever, I don't need you. All I need is my fishing poles and my boat and my dogs. These are first world problems, but I think it's gonna be a good time. about noon, there's a big burn coming in, a big forest fire that had started uh, up in the mountains, coming over the mountain pass, and so it held us up a little bit longer, but we're on the water, I'm absolutely starving. We got a few different things in the boat with us here. We got just my normal Salilo trout rod with Old Faithful, gold and black, Panther Martin. I got the silver and blue, steelhead slammer. Fishing seems to have been good, I think we're gonna be okay. I really want to go look for a rattlesnake today too, so we're going to wait till a little more in the evening and we're going to go out in the in the bush and try to find big dark rocks. Actually, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to stick around to see how we do that. Hopefully find some blackberries. I got my binoculars over here sitting next to me so I can look up into the canyons a little bit further, see if I can find any berries or anything like that. I wish I could have at least had breakfast, but we're staying true to this challenge. We're not eating unless we got it with our bare hands, so... It's time to start. Basically, as soon as we catch something, I'm going to break out the grill. I'm going to fry it up right there because <laughs> I need breakfast and it's about past lunch too. So we got to make up for two meals and hopefully find some dinner. You know, it's kind of crazy to think about when you get out here sometimes. We're floating down the river like this, going to do a, you know, lame little two-day challenge. How there was people here before us that were doing 30-year challenges. That was their life, was living out here off the land and how we take it for granted now. And it's neat to see these challenges on YouTube. That's the inspiring thing about, you know, things like YouTube and just the internet in general that can get you out of your box and make you want to go out and try little things like this. I'm sure we'll be doing lots more where we do 30 days, maybe even months long challenges like this. This is just the start, but you know, that's the, the beauty of it all. Turtle. There's a turtle sitting on the edge of the water here, guys. And it looks like a little tortoise, not a turtle. Looks like one that you'd have it for a pet at home. I don't know, you guys, should I do it? I said rattlesnake, but I think turtle might be a better idea. Got him. I don't even know, but that sure is cool. 
I'm not sure if these things are protected in Oregon where we're at or not. I don't know what this thing even is. It's a little, little turtle, I know that much. <laughs> Look at this little dude, he made a friend already out here on the water, but he's got webbed feet. He doesn't look like he was released. I don't necessarily even know how to cook this thing, nor do I know if you're allowed to even kill him because they do look beautiful. But I'm gonna slip him back in the river. We're gonna stick to our original plan. We're gonna stick to our original plan and uh, let this poor little guy go. All right, little man. I'm gonna name him Tommy the turtle. Later, Tommy. Man, that's fishing nice. Come on. Oh, bottom and I broke. Oh, I got it still. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, that was just bottom. But my God, a hungry guy sure gets excited. I tell you what, it sure looked good. Just fishing the old Sink It series, nightmare jig here. Works good for trout and steelhead. It's kind of what I'm going for. I'm gonna do one more cast through there and then we're gonna get moving down. What's this? It's dead. Dang. Well, maybe there's something to that. I was just walking up this grass line here, trying to go find some trout. And I see this giant mussel in here on the bottom. This one's dead, but this is a sign that probably there's some more of these around here. So let me keep looking. That looks like a pretty hefty little meal there. So. I'm guessing they're kind of buried in these, this mud. Oh, there's one. There's another one. This might be dead too, though. Yeah, he's dead. Dang it. Well, I'm gonna keep looking here. Maybe I can find some that are alive. So the trout on this river and this system have to be 10 to 12 inches long. So I gotta be real particular in the ones I catch because I wanna stay legal. I don't wanna get in trouble for making this video today. But it's not too hard. There's a lot of trout in here. Now that it's kind of getting down to the nitty gritty where we need some food, we're gonna start trying a little harder. There's a fish, there's a fish. Oh my God, that felt like a good one too. Dang it. Oh, I swear every time I hook one, I'm getting hungrier and hungrier. Just lost a really nice one. There he is, there's a good one, there's a good one. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. Okay, stay on there, buddy. Stay on there. Oh, that's right in there, dude. That's right in there. That's right in our size range. That looks right at about 10 inches or so. Let's get the measuring stick out. Oh, that looks tasty. That looks like a chunky little guy. I think he's right at the 10 inch mark. All right, so we checked it. It's right at 11 inches, right in between the slot limit. So first little bit of dinner. Since we found this little honey hole, I hooked two right away. So I'm gonna keep fishing for just a minute. We're gonna break out our pan. I'm getting a little excited now. We got some fish. Got, we need to get four tonight, hopefully, to feed us. So let's get one more really quick. I'm gonna put him down here in the side of the boat so he stays nice and cold. And let's get back to fishing here. Woo wee! Yeah, everybody, we did it. I was getting pretty worried there. It's kind of coming down to the wire that we weren't gonna have anything to eat. I actually just fell in the river. I think that's what got me that fish, so. I got some good luck going. Let's keep trying. Oh yes, yes. So first cast back out, you guys. Nailed another one. That one is definitely probably not big enough. Unfortunately, good thing he's not hooked too bad. Normally I'd pinch my barbs, but tonight we were fishing for dinner, so I really didn't want to run the risk of losing these fish every time. Beautiful little rainbow. Let him grow up. Only second cast again though, so we're in the spot. Kind of getting the vibe that they're sitting kind of in close here because they're both hitting it right when they get to us. All right, well I need to get something in my belly really bad here. So we're just gonna go ahead and eat this guy right now. 
Just gonna fry them whole. I'm just gonna clean them off and scale them as good as I can. Get that slime and those scales off. I'm gonna coat the whole thing inside and out in a uh, in just a blackened seasoning. We need some energy. I've been rowing and fishing and driving and moving and going up and down the bank all day here with nothing to eat. It's gonna be a sad day when the dogs are eating better than the owners by the end of the night. Cause I brought them dog food, but I didn't bring us human food, which I think it's better that way. What do you guys think? Drop a comment below whether your dog should eat better than the human. I think they should. They're, they're my best buddies and they never, never let me down. So okay, I'm gonna leave that in there, head and all. Ooh, lizard, maybe we should eat him. Brings a whole different sense to how you, how you were thinking how you uh, go about camping and stuff when you're out here and you didn't bring any food. Everything starts looking like food, except that poor turtle. But Mr. Lizard just slithered out of here. I almost thought about frying him up in some butter. God. All right, so I've got the fish in the pan. And the reason we're cooking with my little stove here instead of like an open fire or something, since we're out here playing Survivor, is that it's fire ban. Obviously, I already talked a little bit about the uh, wildfires that are happening around here. Turns out the road we got here on just closed on the way here. So it's just kind of a risky run this time of year in really any part of the Western United States. So we're sticking with the stove, which is gonna work just fine for this quick little meal. Ooh, that looks good. Nothing like a snack that was swimming about, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. All we did was pull across the river, roll them around in that, let that soak in just a little bit. And really what I'm gonna do, because I scaled this like this, is I'm pretty much gonna eat uh, skin and all on this thing. Just a big old helping of butter in there. Maybe just a skosh more. Okay, so now that I got my butter all nice and caramelized there, it's getting nice and hot, I'm hearing the sizzle. There we go. Oh, that already smells freaking delicious. The wind tonight is making it really hard to cook, so I'm just creating this little, this little barrier with my dry bag here, giving it a little wind break so that that thing won't get so dang blown around and it keeps that heat going straight up into the pan. But I wanna get back out and hopefully it's getting to be that perfect time of night for catching fish. So we're gonna be out here until dark. So I'm gonna try really hard to get a couple more fish on the line so we can get some more dinner, but I had to eat this snack. I was getting way too hungry. He went all day without food. Almost ate a turtle, but hey, we're still alive. I'm sure I can miss a few meals and be okay. All right, let's flip this bad boy over. Poor little guy, didn't even know what hit him. So that blackened seasoning is kind of just your typical blackened seasoning. I don't really know how to explain it. It has a really tangy, uh, it's like a more of a Cajun style seasoning. So it's, you know, kind of gets you right in the nose like you do with like a buffalo sauce or like a, um, some sort of Tabasco almost. So it gives it a nice flavor, gives it a good little spice to it. Gives us a little kick in the ass to get back out there and start fishing. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Oh yeah, it's starting to fall apart already. So what I'm gonna do now is a old trick my grandpa taught me. Just kidding, my dad taught me. But the cool part about this is if you do this just right, you can get all the meat off the bones. Keep it in the pan. And not have to worry about a darn thing when it comes to eating a fish bone. Peeling off that bone nicely. Ooh, it's a fin. Let's see how the fin tastes. Hmm. Definitely blackened. And this is a good way of doing it so that you know you're getting every little bit of that protein. You're not missing any of that meat. You're not filleting it. You're not, you're not doing anything silly. We're just cooking it till the meat falls off the bone and then stripping the bone. Like that. That's all we got left here. Looks like an old cat toy. I'm actually gonna fire this back up for just a second. Give it all one more little crisp. All right, so I just let it heat up again. It's because that wind blowing really cooled down that meat again by the time I got back to eating it. So I'm ready to go here. Got a nice crispy skin. Little piece of fried skin, little piece of belly meat. Oh man. 
pound a little bone in there. That's all right, builds character. But that is delicious. I needed that so bad. Nice fiery, kind of Cajun-y taste to the fish. Nice texture to it. The skin adds a nice little flavor as well. Mm. Well, I'm gonna scarf this down. I'm gonna share it with my man here. We got a little bit of, a little bit of encouragement in our belly we're having now. Let's go fishing. So before I get too wild and crazy here, I'm gonna check just right here below me. Might be a little trout ski hanging out right here. I think if there was one there, he probably would have seen us already. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna fish this a little differently. I'm gonna fish an upriver presentation so that these fish aren't seeing me before I walk up there to them. Cause they'll sit here in these little feeding lanes and stuff, but if you start ahead of them or in front of them, they're gonna see you walk up to the water. You know, these things are living off of their eyesight, so. That was the shot. Funny shot. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Called it too. Totally called it. Oh, that's a really nice one. Yes. Yes, that might be an eater, you guys. That might be a real eater. Okay, I'm gonna lay that just off his tail there. There's 13, 14, 15. He's 15 inches. Man, that would have been a good meal, but we're not out here to break any rules or hurt the fish, so we're gonna let this big guy go. What a beauty though, a true specimen, wild trout, just incredible. All right, we're gonna let him go. There he goes. Total money shot, called it even, it hit the water and I said that's gonna be the cast. 15 incher, would have been a good meal but I'm glad to let him go, glad to let him go and make more fish out there for my hunger. I'm only going two days here so I think I'm gonna be okay. Maybe if this was a 15 day challenge or something, I'd be eating him. But let's keep trying. We got lots of daylight still left. I think we can get us some more dinner. Got him. Oh my God. That one might be a little more of, oh, it came off. Dang it. That one looked to be about probably 10 inches or so. Wasn't huge, but was an eater nonetheless. There he is. Seems like the closer I can get to that overhanging. Oh, oh my, oh there he is again. Little guy. Whew, man, they hit like freaking monsters. I don't think that one would have been within our slot limit either. But there seems to be a lot of them, so I'm gonna keep trying this. You see how fast I'm having to reel. I'm just trying to keep it off the bottom, keep it spinning. You know, these fish are seeing stuff come at their face at 10 miles an hour of speed of current all day, so it's not hard for them to see the spinner coming at them. And turn over and grab it or chase it down, whatever they gotta do. All right, so I just came down to this little riffle here. I'm gonna work it really quick. I'm sure there's some trout sitting in it. It looks awfully fishy. I'm gonna work it all the way back down to the boat where I parked to eat our little lunch. And then I gotta get moving. I gotta try to find some more fish before dinner time and a, and a camp. I don't know how I'm gonna do that all at once, but oh, there he is. Oh my God, dang it. Right at the bank too, I think he'll eat again though. There we go, right there, right there, come on. Come on, dang it. That felt like a little nicer one too. There's one. Come on, come on, come on. Dang it, it's not. It only looks about six inches. What do you think, everyone out there? How big do you think that one is? I'm guessing he's only gonna go about seven or eight, so we're putting him back. Man, putting back a lot of food here. But hey, we'd like a challenge. That's kind of what we did this for today. Came to a place where there was slot limits on fish. You couldn't just keep everything and eat everything. That would be too easy. So we went somewhere that you had to keep certain style of fish, certain size of fish, and all in all, harder fish to catch. But it forces us to get out of our box a little bit. So. I think here in a little bit, once it gets dark outside, we're gonna grab the flashlight. It's got some new batteries. And we're gonna go hike around on these big black rocks and see if we can find us a rattlesnake to eat. That's gonna be last case scenario if we can't find any food. So we really steal head fish really quick. We're gonna move on. We're gonna find camp and try to find us a rattlesnake. All right. Well, I'm embarking on the first 
ever addicted rattlesnake hunt video. It's gonna get real here. It might get dangerous. The plan is, in case you all were wondering, is to find a snake on all these hot rocks, catch him with the stick, pin his head down, cut sat head off, and then proceed to skin him and then eat him with some blackened seasoning. <laughs> That's definitely the staple of this episode. What can't you blacken from the river? I'm gonna get to hike in here without killing myself. You guys, stay along for the ride. It's only gonna get weirder. It's gonna get weirder and weirder. All right, now this is what I would call some prime rattlesnake territory. Got those big hot rocks, all this grassy stuff. A lot of this area down below, it's all blackberries where they can forage and, and catch little mice and different things that are living in those berry patches. Kind of working my way up to the last of the fishing holes for the night, trying to hopefully score on a couple more trout. Hopefully this is a double whammy. Kill two birds with one stone, or more like one rattlesnake and one fish. I'm gonna just go for it. Make sure my fanny's all zipped up here. This might be the worst idea ever, but that little little trying to tell me not to. Just stay here. Stay here. She wasn't too bad. Guys. Oh, what was that? Sounds edible. There's some crunching and some munching going on here. So basically what I was just saying before we got our crap scared out of us is we're basically going to walk some of these trails here, these, these game trails back in the woods and try to just see if there's any snakes hunting or anything like that, just listening for the scurrying of them, maybe listening for the rattle, uh, and then we're going to switch it up and go over to the rocks and try to find something uh, a little warmer, a little warmer ground where these snakes are going to whirl out to onto and try to keep warm for the night. Um, or they might be hunting around. So we're gonna just cruise these trails and then we're gonna go up onto the big rock ledges and keep looking and see if we can't find them. So I have the chance, I'm just kind of grabbing myself a snake charmer stick, something to pin them down with. Hold them away from myself while I get in position to kill them. So not only are the snakes themselves dangerous, the terrain in which we're looking for them obviously is as well. Some pretty gnarly rocks here. Just trying to find, again, these little safe havens. These things live down in this brush. They eat and hunt all day. They come out in the evenings up one of these big rock bluffs like this. And they'll be sitting just right out on the trail in the rocks i don't know it really wasn't that hot today so i'm not thinking that very many are going to be out and about normally you see this happen the most when you get really hot you know 100 degree days and the evenings are cool and it cools those rocks or excuse me it gets cool outside so they want to get the warmth from the rocks in the evening so they'll come out and they'll just slither around this stuff in the middle of the night but I'll give it another 45 minutes to an hour here again i'm getting super low on energy getting really tired kind of just maybe want to save myself for the morning for getting up early and slaying a couple trout I'm sure it'll be happening just have to get the ones within a certain slot size and if we're lucky comment below with whether or not you think we're gonna get lucky or not but if we're lucky we'll land a salmon or something big like a steelhead and we can really fill our bellies and get the day going and uh, fulfill the rest of this goal of not eating for another you know 20 hours 24 hours I don't know what it is now I'm getting too tired. But let's keep walking. Try not to die. Find us a snake. And this looks like a killer spot for a snake to be. There's little hidey holes everywhere. So I don't hear them. I don't see them. I don't smell them. I don't taste them. They probably taste me right about now. I'm probably getting pretty frail. Well, what do you know? I found myself in the water now. In a last ditch effort to try to find some food. I have 
resorted to crawdads. Never thought I had to resort to this. Eating bottom feeders. We really should have eaten that turtle. I hope you guys commented below with whether or not you can even eat those things. Because I really wish I would have now. And then I wish we would have eaten that big trout. But So, back to the water we are. Put my chacos back on. Let's start wading around here and see if we can find us a couple of nice, big, thick crawdads. I know they're in here. We're just gonna have to go back and forth searching just these little current lines off the edge of the uh, the main channel. See if we can't find any little bottom feeders here. Like I said before, you know it's a bad day when your dog's eating a better dinner than you are. Well, now I guess the only thing left to do, since we completely failed today, I guess we didn't fail, we did get a snack, but now I'm gonna lay out my cot, wither away in my hunger, sit here and reflect on my day, stare at the old Milky Way galaxy up there, listen to the crickets in the river, and get ready for tomorrow. Keep high hopes, hope for the best, Keep fishing, keep trying. We're gonna wake up early, try to get on some fish, try to get on some food, berries, maybe a snake. Who knows? The adventure continues. We'll see you guys in the morning. Oh. Well, good morning everybody. I am so hungry. I got a little migraine. Slept pretty good last night though. It was just beautiful out here. Gotta stay positive this morning. Sun just broke. We're gonna get our stuff packed up, get our feet in the water, and get back to fishing. Woke up this morning. I knew there was some blackberries nearby. I had the nice aroma of berry coming towards me. We're actually seeing a little bit of life here. Oh, not quite ripe yet. It's weird, half of them are dead, half of them aren't ripe. Sweet taste of relief right there. That's what we call a nice balanced breakfast. Ooh. That one was sour. So we're gonna go get the boat ready, pump some air into it, make some coffee, and go fishing and eat as soon as we catch a fish. So my fingers are definitely crossed. Hey all you addicts out there, thanks for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. I'm Jordan Kinnegy, and if you haven't hit our subscribe button, tap that little button right down below. Turn on those bell notifications. Here at Addicted Fishing, we wanna bring you great, entertaining, inspiring content for fishermen and anglers all over the city and the county and the state and the country and the world and even the universe. Today, we have a really interesting product that we've worked with some of our partners at Honey Bucket to develop the Addicted Piss Jug. Now I know what you're thinking, why do I need an Addicted Piss Jug? Well, let me tell you. We've done a lot of great things in testing and research with Addicted Piss Jug. First thing I wanna show you is the handle. We've got a strong handle that won't slip out of your hands and won't tip over in your boat, and it's really important not to drop your pee. The other thing we've done is we've used a very large, open girth mouth here, so it accommodates all kinds of fishermen, all uh, girths of fishermen, and skill levels of fishermen in your peeing. So if you have a solid stream or a slow stream or any kind of stream, this is a jug for you. Now you might be wondering, why don't I just pee in the water or just pull over and, and pee? Well, let me tell you some of the things that are really important to know about peeing when you're fishing. Did you know that urine contains all kinds of unnatural scents that stifle the fish bite? And if you are fishing through a rock garden or boulder garden, or savage garden, or stump garden, or frugal garden, and you dump your urine in the water, that you can actually change the chemistry and microbiology in that water to impact a variety of kinds of specimens of fish. Now this is not the right thing to do for the environment. And here at Addicted, environment is important. We wanna have a sustainable fishery long-term, and if everybody's peeing in the water, then that's not good for the fishery. Now, you've heard us talk about the foam is home. Well, we want you to leave your foam here in our piss jug, because peeing in the river, is gross. 
Now we've also got coming out a attachable hand sanitizing station for this piss jug. Now if you're anything like me and you watch one of your buddies peeing in, in the boat and then he comes back to you and says, hey, can I get a handful of your trail mix? That's disgusting because we know he didn't wash his hands. Now you can support your buddy, keep him hungry, keep him from being hungry and happy all day by using our addicted piss jug and it's coming to stores near you, also available on our website and watch for our live feed. Uh, we'll be giving a few of these away as well. Stay fishy. Well, day two is underway. We're officially on the float. Obviously the trout bite was super good. A lot of trout around, super easy to catch them. So we're gonna stick to that program. We're gonna go down and hit some of the steelhead spots, hit some of the trout spots. And we're just gonna see what we can get the most of. Hopefully the trout we get are within the realm of being able to keep and hopefully we can find a steelhead or something that is a hatchery fish. So, but all in all, we need to find some food here. We got a long day ahead of us, long smoky day, but I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. All I know is when we're off the river today, I'm gonna be getting me a big old chicken sandwich or something. So, all we can do is keep trying. Got him. Instant, instant. Feels like a trout. I'm gonna keep him low though. This feels like a nice one. What do we got? Oh, it's probably pushing it. That's probably pushing it, but he looks right in the realm. I'm gonna take it a little more easy on this one. Right through the nose. What a cool looking little trout. Let's see what we got here. What do you guys think? I think it's gonna pan out at. Ten and a half inches, he's right in the realm there. Sweet, we got breakfast. Whew, all right, thank the Lord. I'm gonna toss him in the boat, I'm gonna keep fishing, then we're gonna get to eating because I'm starving right now. This one here, I'm probably not gonna eat as much of the skin because obviously he, he's in a little rougher shape. What? What happened to our butter? Little. What do you guys think? He looks pretty guilty to me. Little, did you eat the butter? Did you eat the butter? God. Comment below us whether or not you think he ate it. Obviously he ate it because Dash didn't get out of the boat. What a jerk. As if we weren't hungry enough, Little. You got your food. We had to steal all our butter. That'll do the trick. Now since it's breakfast, I'm gonna go with a little bit more of a breakfast flavor. I'm gonna go with just the garlic herb seasoning. Maybe add a little Janny's for flavor. There's no salt in this, so you guys think I went heavy on it, but I'm just doing that so that we get a nice evenly spread. A lot of that's gonna come off as soon as it hits the pan anyways. And it looks like we're ready to fry. You know, it's crazy when you're sitting here frying up a fish like this that you just caught. Just gave its life to give you give you a little food, unwillingly of course. Just makes you realize how much in the real world you really take for granted, you know? It's so easy to just stop at the store and grab a bunch of snacks for the river, or for the camping trip. But when you come out here and just rely on what you catch to eat, it might not make it a lot more fun, but it definitely changes the mindset. You know, you start hunting for, hunting for fish just because you're hungry rather than just because you want to tug on them and let them go. So kind of eye-opening experience coming out here and doing this. I've been out on the river before, you know, as a young kid. I usually try to go a little more prepared nowadays than I'm an adult. But when I was super young, we used to go out with nothing and uh, enjoy the heck out of it. But now 
and having the luxuries, having all the things, all the technology. It's nothing without a little bit of food in your belly. Mmm, I like the new flavor. It goes really well. It's a really nice compliment to that butter. Butter's kind of a sweet and creamy flavor. And the fish honestly just tastes like fish. But it's breakfast nonetheless. I'm digging it. Try not to eat as much of that skin this time. Like I said, it just doesn't look like he was quite as healthy of skinned of fish. So I'm gonna just rely on that meat for my sustenance. I can catch one more of these today where we're at here. So as soon as I do, I'll probably do the exact same thing. Hit the bank, fry it up, get some in my belly and then keep rowing. Okay, so we put on a good probably seven, eight miles, killed a little water. Got down into the section of the river here, saw a couple people actually that had fish on, so we're gonna stop. So we're gonna start stopping a little bit more. I'm fighting this migraine really bad right now. I think it's just a hunger migraine or dehydration, I don't know, but I am just almost down for the count, but I'm gonna keep fighting through. I wanna get a good fish here, hopefully a salmon or a steelhead. If not, one more trout at least to eat, get something in my belly, because we still have about another 12 miles of rowing to do. Well, I think I smell something, and it's not just smoke. I swear, every time you get close to these blackberries, you can start smelling them. Here's some right here, thank goodness. I was needing a little second breakfast here. Oh, these are nice and ripe too. They're spider infested though. Oh man. What a blessing. Mm. You know, Half the time in the summers, growing up as a kid, I lived off these things, so I don't see why there's no reason now I can't. Oh, right there at the bank. Well, that looks like a perfect size one, too. All right, let's get our tape out. Well, we just stopped at this little tail out here. Looked like a nice spot for a trout or a steelhead, so threw a couple casts with the steelhead spinner and then tossed the trout spinner out there and whammy. 11 on the dot. Perfect. Perfect. Lunch. We got lunch now, you guys. We had one for breakfast, we had one for lunch. Let's get this guy blood out and in the boat and we'll get down to the next spot and get ourselves some lunch cooked. Got him, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. <laughs> Little no. On the plug, dude. That's a Chinook, too. Oh, you guys, that's a really big fish. Holy crap. That's a lot of meal. Holy crap, dude. That's a lot of weight to it. Turn around now. There's a big tree under the water. It just came off. Broke the hook off. Oh my God. Broke the swivel that connected the hook. Oh my God, man. That was such a big salmon. Being hungry doesn't help that one go down. This plug's been in my box for forever. And I didn't even think twice. I mean, when's the last time you have a swivel just bust on you like that? I could just feel those head shakes, man. It was like, it felt like two to three feet every time he moved his head like that. Look at that. What a joke. Well, day two is slowly coming to a close. I ended up saving the trout for dinner. 
in case we didn't get any more fish. That was my second trout of the day, so that was my limit. So I couldn't technically keep any more. So I've just been trying as hard as I could for salmon or steelhead all afternoon. You know, I personally really enjoyed this challenge. It was a little more frustrating because we weren't really catching that many fish, but I can't wait to do another one. So if you guys haven't already, drop a comment below with where you want to see us do this next one. Um, I, I think that's something I want to bring into the table, changing this up a little bit in the, the challenge world on YouTube is leave it up to the viewer to tell me where you want me to go to try to do one of these challenges. A lot of things are going through my mind. So if you have some ideas, drop them, drop the comment below with your idea of where I should do this next challenge. And I mean more aware, like what kind of climate this time i did it out on a river in the desert there's nothing really to, to fend for you know it's the middle of summer there's forest fires burning there's a couple berries on the bushes some roots in the ground but mainly we came just to catch a couple fish comment below with what you think if you like today's video smash that thumbs up and we're gonna head down and get this last trout cooked up i'm gonna do a special little recipe so stick around and you're gonna like it First things first, we get our little liner going here, as the hobbits would say. I'm gonna get my grill started here, get my buttered caramelizing again. These Gerber scissors are great for these trout like this. It's really, if I'm doing like kokanee or trout or any kind of small species of fish, I'm using these things all the time. So the seasoning I'm gonna do this time, it's a little bit different. Got some old bay here. I'm gonna go heavy on the Old Bay. It's a really nice like brothy taste almost. Usually we use it a lot for like doing crawdads or anything like that, or uh, crab or any other kind of maybe walleye recipe. But in my opinion, the trout are just as much of a white meat as walleye. Maybe it doesn't taste the same, but I'm gonna use the same Old Bay. and go back through it with a little bit of Johnny's here. That is delicious. Almost tastes sagey. It goes really well with the smells out here. Well, thank Mother Nature for this meal. I think every meal we had on this trip was definitely a uh, a blessing. Fishing didn't seem to get, be that good anywhere on the river, like I was hoping. But caught a lot of trout, played by the rules, made it happen. The 48 hour challenge is completed. We've been out here for two full days. I'm beat. I'm ready for a big old burger or something. All right, everybody, we're on our way home. The smoke is cleared, we can finally breathe again. And we completed our 48 hour challenge. If you guys haven't already done so, drop a comment down here below of what you thought of this challenge. I know I'm freaking starving. I'm ready to get back to town and get some food. But drop a comment below if you would ever try one of these or if we should do a longer one next. I'm thinking we put ourselves in even a different scenario. And like I said before, drop another comment below with where you want to see us do this next challenge. Maybe we would have to do one in the winter time somewhere. So if you want to see another video that's cool, just like this one, go up here, hit the link to this video right here. Go down, hit subscribe, drop that like, and do comment below. And if you comment and interact with the video, you can be the comment of the day, just like this one right here. You guys stay fishy. We'll see you out there.